I've always been an academic follower of boxing. I'm a big Muhammad Ali fan. Um, so I've always been drawn to watching boxing movies. In a way, I was sort of um, emulating one of my heroes, Muhammad Ali, even though I'm a skinny white boy from Edinburgh. You know, it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit different to Muhammad Ali. But um, I, knew, I always knew that if you prepare correctly for anything, you'll be okay. I was drawn to it at first because I was so curious about the two sports being mixed together um, that I went along with Alan actually. When I, when I turned 30, um, I, I had this, uh, came up with this philosophy of doing something new every year, um, some kind of experience or physical exertion to define that year of my life. I asked Alan, do you think you could step into the ring and do that? And uh, he said, yes, let's, uh, let's do it. If you strip it right down, it's just that bare um, animal instinct of only having your, your fist to protect yourself. You know? You're relying on nobody else but yourself. You go up fast in the boxing gym, you know, because it's all fight. It's all about fighting. You can't play around with it. It's something you've got to take serious. If you play around with it, you'll get hurt in here. Put the two of them together, they, 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 they both work together because every, every, move on, every move in the ring as a fighter, you've got to always be different in the way you move. You've got to have your slips, your weaves. You've got to always make sure that you never give that man a chance to beat you. It's the same in the chest. You've got to always make sure that you're one step ahead, thinking that you know already. You've got to protect yourself at all times to the end. The unique attraction of chess boxing is that either discipline can be ended by one, one flash of brilliance or one fatal error. It doesn't matter if you're many points ahead in the chess or the boxing, uh, that could all come to nothing uh, ju ju just through one uh, almighty my, mighty coup. The thing that binds the two sports together is this you have to have this intense concentration. The, the training um, consumed my life. Ah, oh, chess boxing is wicked. It's a proper, it's a proper, it's a proper uh, man's game. So um, about six, seven months after that, we, we stepped into the ring for the first time, proper, properly, and uh, it's something I'll never forget. We've known each other since we were about, I think, 13, 14. Um, went to the same university together. I was best man at his wedding as well, so I don't think you can get any closer to, to a guy. He's my best mate. You know that you've got to face, face the other man on the night of a fight. Both of you are worried. Literally got that little fear factor inside because you never, because no, everybody wants to win. our failings would be uh, there in front of everyone. before the fight, I slept terribly that whole week. And we were told that um, they're going to have to change the schedule. They kind of said that basically we would have to be ready in a, in a moment's notice. It was just quite a tense atmosphere all around.
Before I knew it, the second fight was back in the changing room. This fight was over in the blink of an eye. And then, um, I can't remember who it was, but somebody came in and said, right, you're on in five minutes. It was terrifying, because I knew that it, it, there was no way I could get out of it. My music started, and uh, I don't remember the walk into the ring, but I remember thinking before the ring, I'm just going to go in and just like put my arms up. I remember walking into the ring and not being able to hear a thing. It was only when I got back to the corners that the noise slowly sort of came back and sort of built up, built up again. So by the time that we sat down to the chess, I could hear, I could hear this sort of huge, huge sort of tsunami of noise coming from all around the ring. It was, it was quite intense. I could see he weren't focused 100. He was focused 80%. So I just said to him, float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. That's all you have to do. You just got to float and sting that jab. I remember this uh, horribly. Alan moved his, his, his rook out, attacking the, the right hand side of my right hand side of the board. And I spotted what I thought was a weakness. In fact, what was a weakness on Alan's defense um, brought my knight up. And I was going to move it another couple of spaces forward and have a fork on his king and his uh, rook, I think. So I was, I was quite confident. But moving that piece meant that he had a a clean view on my queen. So he knocked my queen off. Um, and at that point, I felt the world sort of cave in. And the commentator, I remember him saying, that Sven's queen gone, he's in big, big trouble now. Early on in the game, Alan, Alan is odds on for the win. At that point, I knew I wasn't gonna win the chess. I had to defend and hope that I would win on time or knock Alan out. Any goal in a match or a competition is to win. So I can understand Bobby Fischer when he said that he wanted to annihilate the person's ego because it's, it's human nature, isn't it? If you have not got self-control, you will lose. That's what fighting is about. What I found distressing was the uh, psychological battle. Because he was my friend as well. The p the people I really wanted to be there, my wife and my father, it seemed at one point that he was going to miss the fight. It became quite difficult. By chance, the whole night was delayed, so my father did end up making it. So I could see him in the distance, and I was a way, and I thought, right, now he's here, and that changed the whole thing for me. But I was determined. Now that my dad had made it all the way down, I was going to win. Why I would want my father to see me fight my friend is a difficult question to, to answer, but Knowing that he was there made it easier for me to go through the experience. And there was, there was one punch that Alan landed on me that, where he got me and that nearly knocked me for six. Um, and I thought, I thought at that point, if he, if he hits me again now, I'm down. We went through five rounds of, of boxing, we both dead on our feet, we had given it absolutely everything. So we both knew we were near the end and went into this clinch. And then out of the blue, Sven said something to me. And uh, he said, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he said something along, along the lines of, mate, this has been absolutely unbelievable. You're, you're, you're a brilliant man or something like that. And that, um, we had this moment up there between us in the, in the ring that nobody else was aware of. to the winner and I thought at that moment that split second I thought I've lost it I've lost it and then he just said in the red corner and my mouth dropped I, I, 
sensed in his heart that he had overcome a mountain that he did never know what was going, how it was going to turn out. And where he turned out victorious, it touched my heart. Any man who, who, who goes through the training and goes in the ring, I take my heart off to him. Because it takes so much confidence or so much to make you walk out of that door and to walk in that ring.